Gloria Vale has been run by men, but today was a win for the women. We've got six very happy ladies here who feel very vindicated. These six women have stood up for themselves and won. The court sees that we were employed. It's just so incredible to just to be believed. Six women now legally seen as the hard-working employees they were for years on end and under punishing conditions. The decision could have major ramifications for the reclusive community. The women will now be compensated. So it's hard manual labour um, and that would be all day. You know, you just wouldn't eat. There are people in Gloravale who are also awaiting this judgement who I know will be very pleased that the judge has seen that there's uh, there are issues there, there's exploitation and there are people who need a better life and better choice. It smells like, sounds like, looks like slavery. Well, strong words there from lawyer Brian Henry, who joins us now. And Brian, people might hear slavery and think that it's just not possible in New Zealand. I would have thought so. But what we see here is a government report saying that these people are volunteers. If you read what we believe, which is their founding document, which the judge has done a few times now, if you go through the community and you see these little wee tots mm. in their little blue uniforms, which is the clothing for life. And as the judge said, they're born into it by the fact they're female. And they've got nowhere to go. Well, this, this is... Um, the judge went as far as I think to say that, you know, it's exploitation. And we are talking about children in this situation, forced into labour from age six. She, she said it's hard work, um, describing it as unrelenting, grinding hard and physically and psychologically demanding. Six-year-olds. Six-year-olds. But the thing is, that's the life they've seen from the moment they're born. They know no different, they're taught no different, and it's an utterly male-dominated society, and they are there, and I've used the words, looks like slavery. If you're born into something, you've got no choice. You have people controlling you, total power and control over you, your life, your whole of your life. That's what the ordinary word slave means. I'm not talking about criminal slavery. That's what the ordinary word slavery means, and in my opinion, they are slaves. Well, something really interesting came up during your cross-examination um, of Howard Temple, and I think this is a crucial point in the, in the court case, isn't it? Um, that is that these children are separated from society as part of Gloria Vale's strategy to mm. keep them uh, within the community. We can take a look, look at that, um, that piece of the cross-examination now. The key word there is Christian unity, isn't it? Yes. And Christian unity is brought about by keeping them separate from the rest of the world. That's part of the church life. So the answer Keep is yes. Keeping them separate from the world, well, that's a, a part of our separation. What I'm putting to you is that the reason for that separation is to keep the children in the community, isn't it? That is one reason, yes. It's an extraordinary piece of cross-examination there. And, and, it's, and it is crucial, isn't it, because it sort of proves that they are there not of their own free will, that there is no choice. They cannot be volunteers. It, it's a decision made 50 years ago. And what they were doing is they were prothelising, which was bringing in adults to increase the membership. And they decided that they would actually build with the children. So the population built with the children, they isolated up into the wild west of the South Island and they literally depended then on child labour. All their businesses required labour. Didn't have adults, so you've got 600 in the community, 400 are children. Mm. And they are the ones that ran the dairy, they ran the various businesses, they weren't so much in the rendering plant, which is horrific place to work. But you saw the girls were marshalled, organised labour. You saw the little boys marshalled, organised labour in the first case, the courage decision. And it was a conscious, deliberate, what I called a doctrine of separation to him in cross-examination. He accepted that. And he's quite happy about it. To him, this is fine. Yeah. What's the problem? Well, it is extraordinary because you've, you've touched on there that this is the, the second case that you've been successful in now mm. and that actually there are still around, we think, 350 children uh, between under 15 in Gloryville yeah. who are presumably 
in, if not exactly the same situation, in a very similar situation? They're, they're, they're claiming they've made changes. Uh, I'm totally sceptical, simply because they need to have child labour to operate. Otherwise, how does it work? There's and, not enough adults. And we're also hearing this week that Aero is now investigating. I want to get to, you, uh, get to the sort of institutional failures that have allowed this to flourish. But just to circle back for a second, that the, these children are supposedly educated at a private school within yeah. the Glory Vale community. But Aero is taking a closer look at that this week because of what came out in, in the court case. Well, if they read what we believe at the outset, why are we here? Mm. You know, the judge herself said in the first judgment, a cursory look at what we believe sets off alarm bells. Well, when I first read it, I couldn't believe what I read. And then you had to sit down and work through all the, the jargon and the way they talk. It is an unreal plan saying exactly what he said in cross-examination. That is written in the document. So, Brian, every time I look at this case, you have been steeped in it now for several years, but every time I look at this community in this case, I wonder how has this been allowed to go on for so long? We're talking 53 years now, the third generation. Uh, the protections of the state have not extended to the people or the children in that community, have they? Two, two parts. First, the police put them aside because they are facing a group that are teaching their kids, don't talk to the police, don't cooperate. So they've got a very hard job because they can only react. They're not a proactive social agency, so put them to one side. The courts in 1996, in sentencing the leader, said he was in control, said this was virtually a cult, said that this is a dangerous man. Five years jail. Chief Justice of the Court of Appeal says five years jail. Evidence is he was released within 12 months. Hmm. Back, into Back the to the community. community. As the leader of the community, he ran the community from prison. And you wonder why you got a problem? The thing is that it's only because someone put out a report saying these kids are volunteers and that upset them enough to find someone to help them, hmm. which is us. Mm -hmm. And we're basically doing this charitably, group of four, mm. where's the government been? Where has the government been? We've, it well, looks like a multi-agency institutional failure that's uh, unravelled over decades. Yeah, and there's a segment in the evidence where the Attorney General's lawyer puts to one of the shepherds, oh, we've had this committee since 2015. You know, what has it done? And he says, first I've heard of it. Mm. And he's the senior shepherd. You, you just... It's mind-boggling. But is this is slavery in our country, under our noses, and nothing is happening except through the Labor Court and the Chief Judge of the Labor Court and what she's done in these hearings. Otherwise, it would just be carrying on. Well, I was looking, uh, I spoke to MB yesterday, who is responsible for the Labor element of this. Uh, mm. They say it's much more complex than just Labor laws, but they are responsible for that. Um, and it tells, uh, it, it tells us, MB tells us, that there is more work to be done identifying the employer uh, in terms of getting those, that back payment of the minimum wage, and that there are more bureaucratic holes to leap through, and that they're still, even though the Courage case was over a year ago now, we're still at exploratory meetings. Let, let's get it clear. Employment is about power and control. So is slavery. And if we've got no agency in the government who is prepared to recognise and do something about slavery, we've got a big problem in our constitution. MB can say they've got all these issues. The issue now is the three-year-old girl whose life, by virtue of birth, is dictated into cooking, cleaning and sewing Hard, hard work. Their, their own lawyers are saying, oh, we don't dispute you work hard, very hard. They work incredibly hard. That hasn't stopped. And that's not going to stop through our litigation. That stops because government steps up somewhere in its bowels and does its job. And don't tell me that they've been talking about it since 2015, doing nothing. I got involved in this way after that. And we've ripped it to bits. But why is it us? Mm. Why, isn't, why isn't there someone in the government doing it? I say, put the police aside. They can only come in after the event. Who's leading before the event? There are now little girls 
it, I saw them as we walked around the community. And that is disturbing. Well, we will keep following up. I know that you will keep following up too. Yeah, Brian Henry, thank you so much uh, for all of your work on these cases and also for joining us here on The Nation thank this you. morning.